Yes, it is. Every word. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your word, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. By his spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's a loving Father. Yes, he can. Yes, Lord. Yes, he will. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, he is. Love us first. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time, Lord, I am to be in your service, one more time, one more one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time, Lord, I am glad to be in your service, one more time. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. That's one. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 
know, as we uh, get born again and we say, uh, we are just as good as we already have while we're in the house. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because yes, Lord. Uh, that, that'll keep you to live. Yes. yes. Uh, and, and it overflows from what you do in your own prayer yes. 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 yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You bring that to the house of God. You know what? You still can talk. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Well, yes, you, Lord. God gave you music because, uh, you know, why are you among the Yes, Lord. 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 Yes,
and you know, you you know, you read Matthew where it says, "Seek the kingdom of heaven." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or say, uh, it says, "Where your heart is, there will be the treasure." Uh -huh. also, uh -huh. but you, and then you, 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 I know you read where it says that um, lay up the treasure here where the moth and thief can't steal. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even though you have heard these things, but have you ever learned how to understand it? Uh -huh. I mean, you can hear a lot of stuff, but what if you, you, you never understand none of those things? Then there's just words. I like to get into detail of stuff. To see a systematic way out of the Bible to study the stuff mm -hmm. and then to see it come into my life. Mm -hmm. Look at Luke 12 and 21. And, and this was this was the parable, parable about uh okay, well, I, I, let me go and read the parable. I, I'll just read this parable. Mm -hmm. And he spake a parable because Jesus spoke a lot of things in parables. And he spake that's, that's verse 16. You got mm -hmm. it? Oh, well, I'll tell you what, let's start at 15. Okay, another thing that, that hurts a believer after they get saved uh -huh. uh, uh, is, is everybody say, your possessions. Your possessions. The first, uh, before you get saved, and after you get saved, uh, most people try to live a life where everybody say, well, I can hold on to my possessions. Hold on, hold on to my possessions. That, that not, that's not a, a biblical life to grow spiritually. What if you what if you do just the opposite? Opposite. You learn how to trust God in your possession. <laughs> it's just the opposite. Uh -huh. But I know most people with things uh throughout life, especially with things, you know, they try to hold on to what they have they, they have worked for, uh -huh. what they have labored for. Uh -huh. But that doesn't cause the spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. No, it doesn't. I'm gonna show you. Uh, look at 15. And uh and he said unto him, Take heed, this is Jesus. Take heed. If somebody tell you take heed, you should pay attention. Take heed, man, man. beware of covetousness. covetousness. And, and covetousness was the, uh, the law. You know, don't covet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things uh -huh. which he possessed. Uh -huh. Now, if you go to every last one of our houses, you're going to see stuff stacked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guarantee you. Because you're going to see some. There that you can have years, but you just have to know what to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. And eventually, it, it becomes what? Club. Right. Right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, you always know, go to the bottom of the club. Right? And that's because uh, people, are, everybody say, I accumulate possessions. I accumulate possessions. But once I accumulate all that stuff, uh, a lot of it, it ain't worth nothing. Yeah. When, I, when I got it, it looked good, but now it and I'm telling you, these things that we possess from mm -hmm. inheritance, labor, whatever, it does cause us not to understand spiritual things. Mm -hmm. The average person, after salvation, before salvation, most of their life, they, they, are, they are running to hold on to their possessions. And they are not getting a, a clear, crystal view of God according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said that. He made it plain. Your life does not consist mm -hmm. in the abundance of things mm -hmm. which he possessed. Uh -huh. Well, the same person say, hey, uh, you, only, uh, you only know on how much you work. Uh -huh. Right? That's right. Uh, they, 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 they see your satellite and say, well, how much do you work? Go on the internet and see how much you work. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says your life does not consist. Okay, now, now look at this man that thought like us, all right? Uh, a human being think, that thinks just like us today. And 15, and he spake a parable to them. The drawing of a certain rich man thought for a century. Now, this is Jesus telling the parable. Mm -hmm. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? My fruits. Uh -huh. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my horns and build prayer. And then will I restore all my fruits and my goods. Mm -hmm. Now remember, in John 15, it tells us we should bear fruit, mm -hmm. more fruit, more fruit, much fruit. Much fruit. Uh -huh. And God has ordained us in John 15 and 16 mm -hmm. to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. But what if we go about bearing fruit like this person? Mm -hmm. When we got saved and, and we accepted Christ, one of the, 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 the most powerful things 
Jesus say, I'm, I'm going to cause you to bear fruit my way. The Jesus way. Everybody right. say the Jesus way. The Jesus way. way. Uh -huh. No one want to hear that. What if God wants you to live the Jesus way? And that means he's going to be the one that institute or, or give you revelations on how, how to bear fruit. Uh -huh. Not leaning on your own understanding. But look, one of the people in the world, uh, they think like they, they want to bear fruit too. And they want to do it according to the, the way they, they, they know how. Mm -hmm. Like this man here. He says, you know, I don't know what to store all of my fruits out of my face. Mm -hmm. he, he said, you know, I just I pull these down and I'll build bigger. Bigger. You uh -huh. know, he never thought about nobody else. You know, most people that's, uh, that's been born in church, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, just, they just don't have the mind that, to help people, man. Mm -hmm.
and is not rich, rich toward the poor God. I told you the title of this, this message is Rich Toward God. Rich Toward God. You should live in such a way that you are rich toward the Take time, preacher. Even in the physical, that you you you, you pay a heavy price. A heavy price. But you know, Jesus said, you know, this is the way up, not the way down. Uh -huh. Look, our life does not consist in the abundance of things which we possess. Or exist. That's right. And look, also, I want you to look at, and then so when you teach or do anything about a servant, everybody say, I need evidence. Evidence. And I'm going to tell you, the most, the most evidence you ever need in life is concerning finance. Mm -hmm. Because this is the, 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 the thing that cracks the, 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 the brain and it messes you up. Uh -huh. And it just messes up the normal thought process. If you get hit with financial deficit one after another, the brain won't work like it should. Uh, it, it, it'll, it'll take on grief and, and, and it'll get full anger. It, 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 it'll speak evil things. Yeah. And then it, it, it'll turn wild. I got, I mean, this is proof from the thought process. Mm -hmm. When I was at work the other day, working with this guy, and he got real angry. I mean, we got face to face. We, we almost had a fight. Uh, he was so angry. And then, you know, I, I was, hey man, I feel good. I, I really wanted to, we gonna go today. I, I didn't feel like going through, so we was toe to toe. Yeah. And uh, he, 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 he said, uh -oh, good. he was mad, angry, and I was helping, but he, he came this close, but we were not gonna touch nothing. Yeah. And then I, I said, I'm really down there. I'm not going, we're gonna teach us. We, we just go in. Uh, toe to toe, yeah. He made me so angry. I was got caught and everybody else. Uh, I said, I'm gonna fight you shit. Yeah.
want to grow spiritually. But look, it starts with one belief and one call. Look at 19 of Mark. Everybody got it? Chapter 4. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust. Look at these things and things. Cares, deceitfulness, and lust. When you read about it, pay attention to the words of the Bible. And then you have to look at your own life and see if they are affecting you. Yeah. The cares, mm -hmm. deceitfulness, and lust mm -hmm. of other things. Mm -hmm. See, that? Remember, your life don't consist in the abundance of things. Mm -hmm. And lust of other things. Here in, look, what do we do? It's so. It's so. <laughs> I forgot how. Sure. Now, people don't believe that all this stuff you can find and you're not being, you bust the title of the myth. Before God. Before God. This this is a, a powerful bit. If one reach to a God, what would affect it? Cares. Cares. The secretness. Lust. Lust. Why? These things are gonna choke you. Sure. What is gonna choke? It's gonna choke your ability to learn or learn God. Mm -hmm. It's gonna choke your ability to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. It causes you to be come unfruitful. That's what it is. You don't understand uh, Hallelujah. the labor wage to trust God with. You just won't get it. You won't study. The labor wage. So the thing I work for mm -hmm. is my one tool that'll change my, my, my mindset toward God. Mm -hmm. And my fellow man. You understand? Know that'll change the way I see God. And that'll cause me to come off a of hatred towards people. Mm. Right? Mm. That, that, that brings together my relationship with God and my relationship with people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what ties me in is, is love. Everybody says love. Love. Yeah. Love, okay. love ties that in because my labor, my, my, my labor wage. Love a top my relationship with God with people and it's caused you to live a, a good life. Mm -hmm. if, but if, if not, then the chaos of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the uh -huh. lust of other things. You have no word. And here it ain't. Uh -huh. It chokes what I'm trying to learn about God. How do it choke it? Because uh, my, my, my lust for things. Yeah. My, my life. I'm being deceived by my own self and the devil saying uh, I'm going to live a good life without trusting God. Like the, like, like the, uh, the, the, the man, the rich man that brought forth fruit. Mm -hmm. And then, the chaos of this world. That means uh, everything you see is happening in life. You can't look at this stuff. You, you can't just come and look at it and then that stuff in your mind and you begin to uh, be tight mm -hmm. You know, he said, and then see that, he that observes the wind but not so. Mm -hmm. I mean, when people see storm coming, the last thing they want to do is trust God by that. They uh -huh. They want to uh, go towards the storm and, and, and throw money at that. That's it. That ain't the number. You keep throwing money at that tow up accident, and it just gets worse and worse. So, something broke and towed out, throwing money, they put it. It, it ain't doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually uh, uh, called more problems. More problems. And then what, what's the, the, the quick inability? Continue to trust God and get your labor to it. And you think that's the long process, and that's the long best process. Because the cares of this world, it entered in our thoughts, mm -hmm. it, 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 the lust of all this stuff literally just, it just chokes the word. It chokes the word. You hear things in churches don't go long enough because you're being choked. Mm -hmm. And then, even though God has said in John, uh, as my will for you to uh, have fruit, more fruit, much fruit, mm -hmm. I'm ordained to bear fruit. None of that stuff takes place because of what? cares of this world and the, the lust of other things mm -hmm. comes in and what just chokes the word. And and, and that turns if everybody say a belief. Mm -hmm. That that's a belief that people carry uh throughout life. That belief for you. that I I, I I gotta try to make you know uh, the way I've been doing and, and I I just I'm not gonna trust God like God don't need no money. You know all nah. this type of but you know what? You never find the stuff you see in your head in scripture. Yeah. <laughs> you, 
You show me that in the text and we can debate it. Uh, uh, we can study it. He can't find no place. That's something he heard out of anger and hatred in his own mind. You know, Satan, the Bible says, shoot fiery dogs to our house by sleep. Uh -huh. He can't hear us with something physically, but he can shoot, you know, us fiery dogs. And we have to quench it, what? Through, through, through the shit of our faith in the word of God. Mm -hmm. But if, if my belief system is just tormented by issues bear myself, bars, this stuff is living in my head. Yeah. You know, it's, li it's living in my head. I'm working hard, but I'm working for the devil himself. Why? Because what? He keeps me uh, uh, confused, or he keeps me dimensioned, or he keeps me double-minded, or he keeps me lusting after other things, you know, because of cares in this world. Well, I want to end with belief. What about your belief system? What, what kind of belief system do you have since you've been saved, since you accepted uh, salvation? I got down there to understand your belief system, what it means, and heart and soul, or as one heart and one soul. Mm -hmm. But what does one heart and one soul have to do with my possession? In other, in other words, what does being on one accord with the Lord, one heart, one soul, what does possessions have to do with that? You ever thought about that? You know, people say, well, you know, we need to be on one, uh, one belief, one heart, one soul. Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever heard people say, well, the reason why we are not like that is because of our own possession. Mm -hmm. In other words, one person can bless multitudes of people, right? Uh -huh. uh, you can take one or two, two, three people in church if they understand, you know, the word of God and, and grace through faith and give it, they, they can bless the whole church. It don't take a lot of people. It takes three people that uh, can come to one accord mm -hmm. in a belief. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that as God blesses to Israel, uh, they can all help one another. And they can stay afloat. Now let's find that in scripture though. You can say things, but you need to find it in the word. Look, everybody say one belief. One belief. One soul. One soul. And one heart. And one heart. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 2 and chapter 4. And let's look at some people that actually have count of one heart and one soul. Mm -hmm. uh, Acts, Acts chapter 2. What did you find out today? Uh, not sometimes. Your possession has a lot to do, but you not going to be on one call with a harvest field, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a person that don't have them, right? But you want to teach them so they can get ahead. When I say go to Acts chapter 2, we'll get to say amen. Amen. What is the first century church, the, the way they did it, the first, why does the first thing they do was give up their possession? What, 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 what can we learn from Everybody, chap everybody say, I'm going to go to chapter 2, mm -hmm. and let's go down to verse 30. Oh, uh, where is it? Um, let's say, yeah. Be on one of God. Well, why does, what, what does possession have to do with being on one of God? You know, you, if, if you don't read the Bible, you'll never understand a lot of this stuff. And so, so I've been reading this stuff for years. The more I read it, the more I understand I get it, the better I can teach it. But if you just don't spend your life Spending money buying stuff, helping people, you think it's just gonna fall out of the sky? Uh, you no, know, anybody that got a good business, they took a lot of money to invest. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I believe the same thing with God. Anybody that's gonna live a good life, God, they're gonna take a lot of their time and money and understand they ain't gotta be a preacher. They just gotta be a believer that loves the things of God. You gotta say, I'm a believer, I love the things of God, and, and, I, and I love Him through my finances, because what? He didn't. He loves me. He does for me. Uh, what I say, Acts chapter 2. Uh, let, let's go to number 43 in Acts chapter 2. And you have to study this stuff. You have to study the sort of the parables of the seed. You have to study, you know, uh, so your treasures for the modern deep case. Then you got to tie all that together like a bug. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Right? Yeah, Round it up by a yeah, yeah, yeah. Heal a little, nail a little. And then God will bring it to you in a bit. And he'll show you the tree. He'll put it in the physical. Yes, but you have to believe yeah, in the mind and it can take place. Mm -hmm. Come to one heart, one soul. Look at me say 43. Uh, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed in me 
crazy. No, they, they're going to talk about the preacher. They're going to talk about God. But that's what these people did. These people that were in one belief were together. The next verse, in other words, the next verse, you can say when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they wanted to be in one belief, right? One, on one uh, soul. Yeah. But church folks think that's crazy. They all told me you're crazy. Y'all would never give me two words like this. You get me, you stupid. Well, you know, I'm just reading the Bible while you read it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm reading this, and I'll find another book to understand the Greek that you you better leave before you put money down. You want to let me know the Middle East, some Greek, Amen. some Hebrew, some Aramaic, right? You want to you want to buy somebody's book that they don't read the Bible, and they sold their possession. I, I make the case that your own possession, whether you got a little or a lot, is the one thing that caused you to become unfruitful. I make the case. That means it causes you to believe in your mind that you are still ahead in life if you hold on to more of your possessions. More of your possessions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like the man, you know, he said, I'll be able to bring a little more. Uh-huh. And I'm saying that don't help me grow spiritually to just continue to accumulate things. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and just see people, you know, not have this and, and don't help them. That's not the way uh, to grow spiritually. To grow spiritually. Grow spiritually, you got to suffer with them. You got to sacrifice them. Even when they don't appreciate it. So look, you, you say that you, you with God, right? You, you say that God loves you. You're always calling his name, but you ain't getting nothing. You know, you, you, you got to put your money really literally where your mouth is. Uh-huh. And I know you say, well, that's the way that way to teach hey, that, That's real. That's real. When you get your foot kicked and left out there by spending good money on frivolous things yeah. that can't help you. Can't help you. Well, then you're going to say, man, all that I came into, Bridge, Bridge. after yeah. all of those things I've accumulated, yeah. you still grow. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not a British thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was a lot of work 20, 30 years. I'd have been mm-hmm. in church and I couldn't talk. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, I got baptized in the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. I just saw John and got horns. Uh-huh. But I still don't have a dime. So uh-huh. I, uh-huh. I go to the bank that treats me like I got a tail on. Free, free, they free. won't give me nothing from the bank. That's right. I won't call on God because we don't talk about finances. Uh-huh. You, you better wake up. Mm-hmm. This, this, this is some evil days, right? Dark this and evil. Dark and evil. But yes, God's still on the throne. Free, 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 still on the throne. Still on the throne. Looking through the earth, seeing who he can bless, who heart is fixed on him. He says, There's still some people out there who believe on my word. Oh, my word. Even yeah. though they're going through yeah. all kinds of changes, they still look to me for wisdom and help. Uh-huh. They're not living a fearful life. Yeah. They're not living a fear based yeah. life. Yeah. They're living yeah. a faith based life. Faith-based life. They're telling you, God, God still is good. Great job. In other words, God said, Lord, when I put that grace on you, yeah. Father, what he told Father, now I ain't going to take the throne, but guess what? I'm going to give you grace. Hallelujah! <laughs> That's all he told Father. He said, guess what? I'm going to give you grace. Give you grace. <laughs> and the grace I give you, go turn the world oh. upside oh. down! He said, I'm going to give it to Satan. I'm going to give it grace. I'm going to give it to King. I'm going to give it grace. I'm going to give it to me. I'm going to give it grace. I'm going to give it to Lord. I'm going to give it grace. I'm going to give it grace. Yeah. 
do it again. That's what I'm trying to show you. Paul, keep on doing what his grandson is doing. Because what? He's a loving father. They just come out of a, a great uh, revival, which we're going to say, I want to call it in chapter 2. God said, hold up, let me fill y'all with you. That's what he's about. Because if you keep coming to church, and you, you know what? If you keep coming up, oh, break out. Tired, sleepy, break out. Ain't got nothing. Everybody laughing at you. Kids don't have nothing. Everybody looking crazy. Break. Everybody looking like they tore up on the floor. Break. Break. They keep coming. Break. Break. They keep coming. Break. They keep coming. The people in church are never crazy. Break. Nobody ain't giving them nothing, but they keep coming. They keep coming. Break. 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 God's going to do something to them. Yeah. Yes. God's going to do something to them people. Yes. 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 God's going to bless them. Yes. Yes. He said, look, tore up on the floor. Yes. Put them on a, 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 a white robe. It makes the dead alive. It makes 
against the blind sea. It caused the deaf to hear. It's the word of the living God. But you may trust him. Let us pray. In your lane, let us pray. You can tell us all about it.